and then go on. They are much less receptive. If they're talking to a British person and they say, no, it's like that. You know what's going to happen. I actually had a kind of similar experience, not about sex, but about uh, this group when talking about politics. Because you see, they didn't really engage in the topics that I sometimes proposed, the topics that the book proposed. The first time we were talking about traveling, okay, they were engaged, but then the other times they were, again, yeah. But it was incredible to see the effort they were making to talk about this because they wanted it. And it's the same thing for your students. And I think when we start to find topics and approaches that help us connect with the student and create a safe environment for them to talk that will maybe help us, uh, you know, it'll help us to help them, if that makes any sense. Well, considering the priorities, I had to think of an approach. How am I going to do this? Because they were able to achieve a certain level. And if I told them, OK, let's talk about politics again, they would be able to produce exactly the same thing, exactly the same level, with exactly the same problems. So how do I help them improve? How do I develop speaking, not just practice? And then by researching, I got to this um, idea, considering their needs, considering the diagnostic task, and thinking of uh, getting them to develop, to be more open, receptive to conversation. I thought of uh, task-based learning and adding a task repetition. I'll go into more details. Now is the picture moment. <laughs> we thought of um, the task-based framework. I can see in your eyes that some of you already know it, some of you don't. So a good idea is to start with a pre-task. So first of all, defining the topic and telling them what we're going to do. If the task is, today you are in a bar with some friends and you're gonna discuss politics, share your opinion, and speculate what will happen. Then, just like you mentioned, what's your name? Uh, Patricia. Patricia. Patricia mentioned, we need some input for content. Sometimes they don't talk because they don't really know what to talk about. And this already starts uh, to activate their schematas, their memories. And it's very interesting as well to work with some preparation time before they start speaking. Because if I ask you, what is your opinion about this? Go. Uh, it's okay. We do that. We, we, Criticize our students sometimes when we do that. So allowing them a couple of minutes to think about it, to plan something, to have ideas, maybe it would help. Sometimes individual preparation, sometimes preparation in pairs. As Rubinho mentioned, sometimes just searching for more input material on their phones. Do your students have phones? Sometimes you, if you're teaching regular schools, you're not able to use them. But if you are, it's a great idea for them to start preparing some content and be more prepared as well to be more fluent. They already have some ideas in mind. Then the task comes. In small groups, usually three people would be nice, four, even if you have lots of groups, but little groups. 
um, doing the task. In my case, discussing politics. <coughs> and preparing to report the task outcomes. So they discuss, come to a conclusion or not, and start preparing like, what from this, what, what can we conclude from this? What can we say to other groups? What can we say to the teacher? Because it's also a very important part of developing speaking. In a way, it's a second chance. They did the task and they'll have to summarize the ideas to tell other people. And then we do so. Tell other people, change groups. Mm. That's a good idea. The thing is, for example, in my context in Cultura, we don't use WhatsApp with learners, and that might be your uh, situation as well. But it's actually a very good idea. Mm -hmm. Do you ask the question via audio as well? Yeah, that, that would be interesting. Well. During all of this, when they're doing the task, when they're preparing to report, and when they're reporting, we monitor. This is our job at this point. Not feeding information, not helping, not asking more questions, letting them think. Because sometimes you also know what happens. If we ask a question and nobody answers, what do we do? We answer the question. Or we keep asking more and more questions to see if somebody will say something. But in the end, we're talking all the time and they're not. So actually allowing them to do the task without our interference might give them more confidence to talk. If not on the first day, but if you do it repeatedly, they will know that you are not going to interfere. Well, after monitoring, we take lots of notes. And then comes the little language part in which I worked with uh, vocabulary, with uh, grammar for uh, speculation, with interruption expressions, for them to be able to do this task more effectively. They achieved this level here. But by giving them lots of feedback on their production and telling them what is good and what is not, because sometimes they are um, intimidated because they try, they talk, and then we, we correct them. And they'll, they might think, well, I'm not going to say anything because she's just going to correct me. Sometimes they'll feel intimidated. So it's very important for us to be able to tell them what is working as well. Something, even if it's a little thing, it's working, a little thing. Teachers, we tend to focus on mistakes. We're analyzing people all the time. It's a little part of our nature, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but it's very important for us to be able to motivate students to see what's good. And for them to know that we see what's good. And then they'll be more motivated to talk again because we are observing the good aspects. For us to develop language, we can use their own production or we can use um, the input materials and maybe if it's a video, for instance, listen to the video again and let's pay attention to some more specific words to, for them to be able to develop. And after having developed, we repeat the task. And then guess what? They'll do it better. Which builds confidence. And then the next time you propose a task, when they're preparing, they will kind of already know what to expect. And they'll do the task more effectively, but they'll feel comforted that we'll do it again. And then by doing that, you do it here, you make progress, you do it again. You do it, you make progress, you do it again. They will start to realize 
that they can make progress in speaking consistently. Regardless of what we need, if it's Lexis, if it's interaction, if it's organizing their speech, whatever it is. But we need to give them this feedback for them to really know. The task-based learning framework gives them a lot of opportunities to practice. What you were saying before, they are not really in contact with English sometimes. They listen to Brazilian music, they watch Brazilian films, they watch videos on YouTube by Brazilian YouTubers. They, they are so focused sometimes on this Brazilian context. But then by doing this, we'll be also exposing them and giving them some opportunities to interact in English. This will help them with learner autonomy because they'll start realizing that the materials that we are using, we can gather some language <coughs> from that and they can self-correct by us giving them uh, consistent feedback. They will start uh, self-monitoring more consistently. So they will start to become more autonomous speakers. And every day, a tiny bit more confident. But that's all we need. Small steps. <coughs> Task-based framework gives them, it's very important, real life tasks. Not just class tasks. But talking about things that they would talk about in Portuguese, for instance. Even if it's a challenge. And sometimes those are the most challenging ones. But, for instance, if you have a, a group of 13-year-olds uh, and you're teaching them the future, you tell them, okay, now discuss the future. They're like, future? I have a test next week. That's my future. <laughs> It's hard for them to perceive this long future and make predictions. It's tough. But if you think of contexts in which this would be relevant, in my group's case, speculating about politics, they will try, they'll make an effort, they'll, they'll do their best to be more fluent. But real life stuff is very important. What do you mean? If they're interested in that. Yeah. Because sometimes they surprise us. I've recently planned this beautiful speaking lesson about Netflix. And they didn't watch TV series of... What? <laughs> It's, you know, we have to walk the talk. It was lack of my needs analysis. If I had done a proper needs analysis and investigated, I wouldn't have made this mistake. I'm not, I'm not they do. <laughs> but now, actually, lucky for us, recently being a nerd has been a little more fashionable. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to the Big Bang Theory, <laughs> Game of Thrones and all these series, it's made our life a little easier. Well, we have to consider applicability. How much of what we are proposing they would be able to apply in their real lives? If it's an adult group, are they able to use this at work, for instance? If it's a teenager group, is this in their reality? Is this in the TV series that they watch, for instance? in the kind of conversation they would have online, the kind of posts they would write, and so on. And the task-based framework, this is my favorite thing, it gives this sense of achievement, of starting here, growing, and finishing here. Sometimes they want to finish here. You can't. We have to align expectations. But if you think about it, most of our speaking tasks they start here, they finish here. So if you can do this, it's already great. And if they can see this, it's brilliant. 
And then in the end, they get this resultative motivation, meaning they can see the results of one cycle and they'll feel uh, more confident. And the results of the task will give them more energy to do another one. And then good results, and then do another one. And then it builds this uh, cycle of um, interest and progress and positive things. I know life is not ideal, and sometimes we will propose stuff that doesn't work. And that's okay, life is made of uh, right and wrong and things that go, yeah, things that go well and things that don't, ups and downs.